Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will show you that how you can create two outputs or more than two outputs from script component source in SSIS. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is that in SSIS package how we can create multiple outputs from the script component used in a data flow. So without wasting further time let's jump to the demo. I got a SQL Server table here, customer table which contains some data for the three columns ID, name and age and similarly I got another table here course table which contains course ID, name and duration. So what I'm planning to do is that from the script component source I will read the data from this table customer table and will export to a flat file and then at the same time from the same task I will get the data from the course table and will export the data to the another file. So from the single script component source I will read the data and will generate multiple outputs. So I came across to some projects where we have to use the multiple outputs from the script component source. One of the reason can be for example if the data is being read successfully like maybe from the API and if the call to the API is successful then we can generate the data to one of the output the main output and in case if the call to the API is not successful suppose it is failing then we can generate the failure messages to the another output you know the error output so we can have multiple output you can call the output name anything okay so in this video I will show you like how we can generate the multiple output and right now I don't have any video on this topic on my channel so I thought to make a video on this one so what I have done that I have written some code which can read the data from the customer table okay so I have written some code here that I'm using this connection string and reading the data from the customer table these three columns ID name and age okay and then just, I'm just using the data reader here okay and just getting the data and looping through all the data so this way I will read the data from this particular table and then I will export this data to a CSV file okay okay so what I can do I can open the visual studio here so this is my visual studio 2019 that I will be using today and because we want to export the data we want to use the script component so we will use the data flow task here so I can just drag and drop the data flow task into the control flow window and now I can configure the data flow task here so we need to use the script component so I can just drag and drop the script component into the data flow task so here it is asking me like how you want to use the script component like as a transformation destination or source so I want to use it as a source so I will select the source radio button and I will click ok and now I can just configure the script component here so I can right click and click on edit and from here I will click on inputs and outputs so if you click on the outputs and if you expand this one so you need to click on the output columns ok so the first output that I will create is for the customer table ok so maybe I can use this existing output output 0 for the customer one and then I will create another output for the another table which is the uh, course table ok so first I will use the customer output here ok so what I need to do I need to create the columns here so this is output but right now it doesn't contain any column so I need to create the columns here so I can click add column okay and the first column that I will add is the ID column so I can copy maybe the name of the column from here I can just rename this column ID and this is 4 byte sign integer so this is good now I can add another column and the second column is name so I can copy the name from here okay and uh, I can just rename this one I can maybe select like uh, uh, a string here very care 50 I can add third column third column is I think age so I can again copy this one and uh, I can rename this one to the age I can press F2 from my keyboard and the data type is 4 byte sign integer okay so I can provide the data type here so I have uh, added three columns here and then given the appropriate data type so this is my first output okay this is the output for the customer table okay now I can click here and I can add another output for the another table and the next table is uh, course table okay so I will add a output for the course table now so I can copy the name from here and I will click here add output so it will generate another output and the default name to the second output is output 1 okay so I will rename this one 
and I will call the second output as course okay and now I will click on output columns and here I can click on add column okay so now the first column that I will add is the course ID okay and I will rename this one and the default data type is 4 byte side integer which is perfect for our case now I will add another column and the second column name is course name okay so I will copy the course name from here F2 uh, rename the column okay course name and then we need to provide the appropriate data types so the data type for the course name can be string 50 so that is good now I can click on add column and I can add the third column so the third column name is course duration years okay I can just press F2 rename the column and the data type is 4 byte sign integer which is perfect okay so I created two outputs here output 0 which will be for the customer and then the second output is course okay so if you want to rename this output so you can call it like customer so I can just rename this one okay so one output is customer another output is course so you can press the F2 key to rename an output okay so now we got two outputs here now I will click on the script and then I can click on edit script so once I will click on edit script then it will open the script editor for us where we can write the code and where we can actually insert the data to the output so that it can be further read all right so the script editor window has been opened up okay and we need to write our code here create new output rows okay and the code that i have right now uh, you know in another uh, program which is the c sharp console app so it just read the data like id name age from the customer table so i have breakpoint on the main method and for example i can just show you quickly like uh, selecting the data from the table so i will just show you like uh, selecting couple of records okay so it is just reading the data using the data reader so the first value is id 1 okay and the name is john doe and age is 30 okay so if you see the data here id 1 name john doe is 30 okay so it is reading the data perfectly and if i select the second uh, record so the id is 2 name is Jan Smith and age is 25 to Jan Smith 25 so it is reading the data perfectly so which is good so now what I can do I can just simply close this one okay and now I can go back to my script component code okay and now what I can do I can simply copy the code from here try and catch block all the code I can copy from here and I can paste inside the script component okay so it is missing some namespaces show potential fixes using system.data.sql client okay this class is used for accessing the data from the sql server database okay it is using one of the method where we can log the error so maybe i can create another video like how we can log the error messages to a sql server table so right now i will just disable this code comment out this code okay so here we are just selecting the data from the customer table and looping through all the records now I want to uh, write this data so if you see here this is the while loop so we are just selecting all the data from the customer table okay and assigning them to some local variables like ID name and age so here what we need to do where we are assigning the data to the local variable and just looping through all the records so here we can just add the records to the appropriate output okay so in this code for the customer table we will what we will do we will add the data to the customer output okay so if you write customer here so there is a customer buffer so we need to write customer buffer dot add row semicolon and now we can add the data to the customer buffer customer dot id okay and this is the id from the output column so we need to assign the id from the local variable id okay and similarly for another column which created a name column so we can assign the value to the output column that we created name column from the local variable name okay so I can just assign from here similarly the third uh, column was customer dot age okay and we can select the age column and we can assign the value from the local variable age okay so using these lines of code we are actually assigning the data to the outputs you know the output columns that we generated so we created two output one output for the customer another output for the another table okay so what is the second table course table 
so we created two outputs okay so here we assigned the values to one of the output okay and now let's write the code to assign the value to the second output okay so till here if you see till here we have assigned the value to the one output okay and now i want to assign the data to the second output within the try block whatever code we have written we can simply copy this one okay and then we can just write the code for the second output now okay so we already have a connection string declared earlier so we can delete this one and uh, we won't declare the query again so we can use the existing uh, query variable okay and now instead of the selecting the data from the customer table we can actually copy the uh, query to select the data from the course table and i can paste the query here okay so now it will select the data from the course table okay and now we are just doing the same kind of thing and now here we need to use the new columns the first column is course id course id second column is course name okay and the third column is course duration year okay so here you need to make sure that uh, if the course id is of type integer then you need to type cast it to integer and the course name is of type string so you need to type cast it to string format okay so here we need to use the course output so i can write course buffer dot add row okay and then i can simply copy and paste the course output here course buffer and the first column is course id so i will write course buffer dot course id and we will assign the data from the local variable course id now the second column is course name so i can write course name here and i can assign the value from the local variable course name now the third column is course duration year so we will select this column course duration year and we'll assign the value from the local variable course duration year okay so we have updated the code and so this code will write the data to two outputs so this line of code this will write the data to the customer output okay and it will read the data from the customer table and now this will read the data from the course table and it will write the data to the course output okay so we have written the code i think i can remove this one so our code is ready i can close this one and now i need to click ok so if you will click on ok only then the code will be saved otherwise it won't be saved ok so our code is ready so to write the data to the csv files we can use the flat file destination here so i can just drag and drop to flat file destination here and now i can connect the script component with one of the flat file destination so now if you check the output so there are two outputs here one is the customer output another one is the course output so i will select the customer output from here click okay and i will call this particular destination as customer okay and i will right click click edit click new so i will use the delimited connection manager here because i want to create a delimited file so i can click okay now i will call the flat file connection manager as customer and i can browse the file so i want to create the file at the d files location okay so i can call the file as customer dot csv open column names in the first data row click ok mappings click ok so this is good now similarly the second file was for another output so i can connect the script component with the flat file destination and the second uh, output is the course output so i will call the second flat file destination as course okay and i will right click click edit i need to click new flat file connection manager here delimited click okay and here we need to create the new connection manager and the connection manager name will be course uh, click browse so i want to generate the second file here and i will call the new file as course.csv click open column names in the first data row click ok click on mappings so all the input columns have been mapped with the destination columns click ok so we have configured the our ssis package here now from the script component it is generating two output the first output is the customer output and the second output is the course output ok so if i execute the ssis package then it will export the data to two csv files customer csv file and the course csv file so you can see that the process ran fine for the customer table it exported five records 
uh, because there are five records here in the customer table and in the course table we got the 10 records so that's why 10 records got exported to the course table now if I show you the data in the D files location then you can see there are two files here course.csv and the customer.csv so I can show you the data in both the tables so this is the data in the customer CSV files there are five records in this particular file and in the course file there should be 10 records and the file is a CSV file comma separated file okay yeah so I think this is perfectly fine and this is what you wanted from the SSIS package so using this particular approach you can just create multiple outputs from the script component yeah so I think that's it for today's video and I will share all the code that I used here in the script component so I will share the code and uh, maybe I can just share the whole SSIS package if you want I think that should be fine as well so you can download it from the link in the description of the video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please hit the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video thank you so much